Hi Greedy 3 dears. Now, have you heard of the blob, the dreaded blockage of your nozzle that is pretty much inevitable if you're a 3D printer? Well this morning I have found the blob on my Ender 3 V3. Let's have a little look at it. And there is the blob. The clogged nozzle from hell. I think in the words of Thanos, if you've never had one of these, it is pretty inevitable you're going to get one. I've had a printer for years now and never had one and I've got one now on my Ender 3 V3 of all things. Let's take it apart, let's clean it, let's see what kind of damage it's done and how hard or easy it is to fix. Stay tuned. So the first thing to do, or more importantly the first thing not to do, is panic. Don't grab something really, really sharp, like a pair of pliers or a cutter, and just start yanking and pulling like mad at your blob. You'll destroy your printer, you'll destroy your printer head, you'll throw things out of alignment, you'll get frustrated with it. Don't do it. Take a deep breath, step back, and we'll talk you through the process of getting it off. Now, you have to resign to the fact that there may be a consideration here to buying a new hot end. We'll try to fix it. We'll try to get it all repaired. We'll try to remove the blob as best we can, but there may be damage inside because you don't know where that blob has gone until we start to play with it and take it apart. So let me show you how to clean it all off and see what you're looking for and see just what to do and what not to do. Now you may be really, really lucky and just grab it with your fingers and give it a little bit of a tug and it pops off. The chance of that happening is slim, but it's always worth trying. As you can see on mine, the uh, the blob is pretty huge. And what I didn't know at this stage was it actually blobbed all the way inside as well. So you can't always tell the extent of the damage at this stage. So what I'm going to do now is heat my hot end up. Just touch the figure there, the number figure. Type in what you want it to be. I'm putting 250, which is well over PLA temperature. If you use it a different material you may need to put it higher and the hot end will heat up now don't be surprised if it does this and starts to smoke this is not beyond the realms of what could happen you've got to remember you don't know how far this has gone inside it could be touching directly the hot end and all I'm doing now is I'm taking a pair of uh, these sharp edged pliers here these calipers cutters and I'm gently and I mean gently just prizing just pulling and just seeing if i can get anything off with the heat now going into the hot end if you're really lucky it will come off at this stage but for me unfortunately this just wasn't doing the trick at all it was still absolutely rock solid so i thought let's take the front cover off and there's two allen keys either side of the front cover on these ender 3 v3s uh, your printer may be different but the principle is the same take the cover off and for me couldn't get the cover off it was absolutely welded on with plastic again not too surprised but definitely worth a go now what I've done here is this is the patience bit required. I've just took these cutters and I am gently and I am carefully cutting through the plastic that has come out, cutting through the PLA. It's a slowly, slowly catchy monkey process. I've left the heat on at this stage because what you will find is you'll touch a little bit, you'll cut a little bit and it will pull right off and you'll get a big chunk off. Just keep going, be careful, remember it's hot, remember the electric is on, don't take any chances, just take your time and carefully have a go. This is not going to be a quick fix in all likelihood. This has taken a while to come this way and it normally happens when you print fails it gets clogged and it just keeps extruding and it goes all over the place take your time with this and as you can see i'm starting to get little bits off now i have managed to get the, the front off now but and you can see that the damage is quite extensive inside there it's actually gone underneath and you can see why the front cover has been welded on um, I'm going to carry on being really, really careful here and I'm going to take the thing apart. So I'm just going to get some Allen keys. I'm going to pull all the connectors off and I'm going to take everything apart. If you're not confident in how to do this, well, maybe you shouldn't have a go at it, but it isn't difficult. If you take your time, if you make a note of what comes out of where and what you've unscrewed from where and which screw goes where, just take your time with it and it's not too difficult. Now once I took everything apart and I got everything cleaned as best I can, I was happy to see that all the wires were still connected, nothing was broken, it was just still a little bit dirty. So what I did then was I put it all back 
together, following in reverse the process that I'd use to take everything out, making sure when you pull any of the little connectors out, you do it carefully, making sure you make a note of where those connectors go and just put it back together. It wasn't difficult, it wasn't hard if you take your time and make a note of everything. And I was happy to see when it all went back together that everything was still working, the hot end was still heating up, Everything seems to be as it was. So I've hot, heated up the hot end and don't forget there's that smoke again. It's got PLA directly on the hot end. That's fine. And I've took a little cloth and I'm really carefully because that hot end is at 250. I'm just wiping the PLA off the hot end as best I can. Take your time with this. Be really, really careful. It will burn you really badly if you don't touch that thing. So be very, very careful. But get all the PLA off. Next thing I've done then is I did an extrusion test and I was gobsmacked. It worked. It extruded. I did think I may need to have changed the nozzle or at least unblocked it, but I didn't need to do any of that. The nozzle just worked absolutely fine. So what I've done here is, as you can see, put a new sock on and I'm going to put the lid back on. I'm happy everything is working. Everything is heated up. It looks like it's sorted out, but we're really not going to know until we do a test print. So what better test print to do on it than the Benchy? So just to reiterate, really, just to talk about this, take your time, heat it up, pull the bits off slowly, take the front off, take it apart as best you can, pull the bits off carefully. If the wires are damaged, if the internal bits are damaged, you're going to need to replace it. But if you can get away with just cleaning it out carefully, and it took me ages to get the little bits of the PLA off the wiring and off the edges and off the intricate bits and off some of the connectors. But once I'd done that, and it took me about an hour to just carefully go through it, I'm now left back with my Ender 3 V3 with a hot end that's fully functional, Everything seems to be working fine. Just took a little bit of patience, just took a little bit of care. And the important thing, don't panic. Stay calm, have a cup of coffee, chill out and have a crack at it. And there is the Benchy. And I'm happy to say that the Benchy is printed absolutely perfectly. So I've got now a fully working Ender 3 machine. I've avoided and fixed and defeated the blob. Now, I always maintain that I am no expert in 3D printing. What I've learned is the things that I've used and the experience that I've got as I've gone through the 3D printing journey. But what I have found is if you take a little bit of time and you take a little bit of care and you just, you know, have a look at YouTube, look at a few videos or other people that have gone through it, just read a few uh, bits on the old Tinter web. It will have the answers that you're looking for. It just takes a little bit of time to find it. Patience is the key with 3D printers. And um, if you've got no patience, if you don't like tinkering, if you don't like fiddling, maybe this hobby is not for you. So I hope you found that useful today. I hope it's given you a little bit of an insight and confidence of what to do should the blob attack you. If you like what you see today, please, please help out and subscribe to the channel. That really would be appreciated. All those subscriptions really, really help to promote the channel. If you want to join the Greedy 3D Patreon, you can. We, we, we welcome you and it won't cost you a penny if you want to join or if you want to just donate a few quid each month just to support the channel, then, um, you know, Thank you. It would be most appreciated. If you want to buy anything that you see today, you want to buy some bits and pieces, there's an affiliate link down below. And that also helps the channel because a little bit will kick back to us and just allow us to carry on doing these things for you. Just as a disclaimer here, if you're going to take your printer apart, if you're going to mess with it while it's on, if you're going to have wires exposed, you do so at your own risk. I take my own risk when I do that. And me showing you how I do it doesn't necessarily mean it's how you do it. You make your own risk assessment. You take your own risks. If you want to do what I have done and you become injured or anything blows up, that really is on your head. I'm not making you do this. I'm just showing you how I got out of the problem. But be very, very careful. And if you're not sure what you're doing, take it to somebody who is. Um, I can't reiterate that enough. Now, that's not me trying to get out of anything. That's just me giving you honest and open advice. So I've made a video here showing you how I've done it. But be really, really careful if you come across the same problem and deal with it the same way. Hope you've enjoyed today. See you next time real, real soon on Greedy 3D.